Yo, 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 what's up, family? Before we start the video, please do a like, subscribe, and share to any and everyone that you can, just so we can get out there a little bit more. With that being said, let's get right into the video. The Boston Celtics took care of a shorthanded Thunder team last night, and Chris Aspazingas had one of his more complete games of the season. He had 27 points on 79% shooting from the field, 12 rebounds, 4 assists, and 5 blocks. We all know how much he has changed this team for the better, but a performance like this just emphasizes how much we would need him in the playoffs, so let's get into the film. How y'all doing? I hope y'all doing good. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not, make sure you take your shoes off before you come to the house. And the word of today's video is helpless. Now, I'm pretty sure you guys know what helpless means, but I'm going to just make sure for the people in the back. Helpless means unable to defend oneself or to act without help. And this does not pertain particularly to Chris Asperzingas, as we're going to be talking about him in this film session. But it's to the smaller defenders when teams willingly give up switches to guard Chris Asperzingas. So here the Celtics go to their slob zoom act. So slob is just an acronym for sideline out of bounds plays. And then of course we got the zoom action here, the pin down from Drew Holiday, and then the dribble handoff and the Thunder just willingly gave up switches all game. And this is why Chris Asperzingas shot 79% and look at Aaron Wiggins, right? You know, Chet is trying to trying to come over and dig. And as soon as Chris Stapps does this ball fake, Aaron Wiggins is helpless. He's contesting the best that he can. But Chris Stapps literally does not see him. He's helpless in this moment. And Chris Stapps shows a touch here. And as I was watching this game, people were saying, oh, well, there's no shade. There's no J-Dub. And that immensely matters to the whole game. And the game would have 100% been closer if those two had played. But as it pertains to what I'm talking about with Chris Asperzingas, Shea and J-Dub do not help that cause for the Thunder. They're about, you know, 6'6", six, 6'5". Six, six, that is just too small to check Chris Asperzingas. And if the Thunder, again, the Celtics just do a simple pick and roll and they willingly give up the switch again. And at this moment right here, Kaysen Wallace is helpless, right? So here, and then Chris Stapps, he faces up, he pump fakes, gets Kaysen in the air, one dribble, Chet helps, he sprays it out to Derek White, and again, he had forces in this game, but he could have had so many more. He created so many opportunities for himself and his teammates in his game by being as efficient as he is in the post. And as we know, Chris Stapps is number one in post-up impact for 75 possessions. He's number one in points per possession for post-ups. He is an elite post player, but again, he was trying to go post up here. He slipped a little bit, and then he's seen Jalen Brown is trying to go 1v1. So what does he do? He uses his 37% from the three. He spaces out, and knowing that Chet is a really good rim protector, that's his first instinct. He helps on the Jalen Brown drive. He sprays out to Porzingis, and he cans it. And what's so dangerous about Chris Stapps being on this team is that he's on a team in a starting five with four other threats. And sometimes other teams just forget about him because he's playing with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, right? And here, the Thunder are reluctant to give up the switch for Jalen Brown, but gave up switches on Chris Stapps all game. That's something to think about. And here, this isn't even Brown or Tatum, right? To start it off, the attention that Brown gets gets Drew Holiday open. He gets to the paint. And when he gets into the paint, there are four Thunder defenders looking at Drew Holiday closing out on him. He sprays it to Tatum. Tatum kicks it out. Chris Stapps is another three. And then the other part of Chris Stapps is, of course, his rim protection. In the last six games, he's averaging three blocks per game. And here, he deters the Lou Dort drive. He challenges vertically, forcing Lou Dort not to shoot the ball. And he turns it over, gives it right to Jason Tatum. All right, so here in this possession, he's going to get switched on eventually to Aaron Wiggins. Uh, Chet does the handoff. And here, he switched on to him. And he's going to do a nice job of showing his hands to the officials, making sure they see that he's not using them. And Aaron Wiggins is going to try to scoop it in. But Brazil has used that 7-3 frame to block it out of bounds. And of course, Chris Stapps had 12 rebounds in this game, and something he's always been good at is these putbacks. I remember his rookie season, he was known for those poster putbacks, and 72% of his offerings of rebounds leads to putback attempts, so he is looking to score after he gets those offensive rebounds. All right, here, these were two really, really good defensive possessions by Chris Stapps on Chet. So here, the action's a little bit clustered, but Chet does a two-step. Chris Sapp jumps with his right hand, but then he switches to his left to get a contest. It forces Chet to hold the ball a little bit longer than he would like to on that shot. We get a fast break. Pritchard misses the layup, but the Thunder go right back down. They get to Chet again. This time, he tries to go into Chris Sapp's chest. He takes the bump. He jumps on the first pump fake here, 
but he's able to get back and contest with that left hand again and forces another chat miss and secures the rebound. All right, here him and Drew run an empty corner pick and roll. He gets the switch on Aaron Wiggins and he does a nice job contesting the initial pass into the post. But now we get to add Gordon Hayward to the helpless crew. At some point in this possession, Chris Ash is just going to realize that he's much taller than his defenders. And here, this looks like a good contest from Gordon Hayward, but Chris Ash doesn't see it. He puts it right out the glass and watch Gordon Hayward's reaction after this shot. We love you, Gordon, but that shake of the head just lets me know he's feeling hashtag helpless. And if something works, why not go right back to it? They run the same action, but this time Chet isn't even in it, so they have the favorable matter to begin with. Drew sees that, throws it up high, he misses the initial attempt, gets one of his four offensive rebounds, sprays it out to Peyton Pritchard, and he hits a three. And I love seeing this from Porzingis in his game. If there was any time where he seen he was gonna have a favorable matchup, he went right to the middle, he ducked in, put his butt on the defender, and he got positioning. And I'm sorry, Kenny Hustle, I love you, Ken Rich, but he is now added to the helpless crew. Kenny Hustle at this moment is hashtag helpless. I was hit a business pick and roll. Jalen Brown tried to take a charge, no call. And here, Chris Sapp jumps over Jalen's leg to block the Chad Holmgren tug attempt. And then here, we're going, we're going. Jalen Brown eventually is going to get up. He receives the pass. And here, Chris Sapp upholds the spacing quota for a Joe Missoula offense. They won to space, space, space. It's very important in his offense. So as soon as he sees that Jalen Brown is attacking, here he's at the elbow. He sees Jalen. He immediately goes out to the three-point line. Chad, again, being the rim protector and the shot blocker that he is, helps Jalen Brown does a nice over the head pass but Zane hits another three and again he did a lot for the team he scored got other people looks and he had four offensive rebounds getting his team second chance points and here it leads to a Tatum three all right so here Peyton Pritchard um, pushes the pace, but he picks up his dribble. He's stuck. Chris Stapps does a nice job of seeing that. Sam Hauser also does the same thing, too. Hauser cuts to Pritchard. Chris Stapps is coming to his aid here. He pump face. He's acting like he's going to do a dribble handoff with Jason. He know, but then the half spin for a 7-3 guy off the dribble to be able to have this control, this mobility, this agility, and this footwork at this size really makes him a unicorn and he finishes with the left hand and something i know a lot of celtics fans love to see is when the thunder went zone it did not work because all porzingis did was go to the middle of the zone and post it up on the smaller guy this is all we need to do in a zone put somebody in the middle that can make a play scoring or for others right porzingis was hot this game he had the matchups and I'm glad the Celtics kept feeding him the ball and they put him in the right position here instead of putting him on the three-point line, which he can be effective at. But right here in the middle at the elbow against a small defender, it's just nothing they can do. And I'm sorry, Lou Dort, one of the best defenders in this league. You are part of the helpless crew. Right here, Lou Dort is hashtag helpless. And here OKC pushes a nice pass by Isaiah Joe, but look at the discipline by Chris Tapp. Stays down on all the pump fakes, uses his size, and forces Chet to travel. And probably the Celtics' favorite baseline out-of-bounds play is just one of the smaller guys screening Chris Tapp's man so he can get a switch and a mismatch. And then here, Kenny Hustle's already part of the helpless crew, and Chris Tapp goes to work again. When you've been as effective as Chris Tapp's has been, people are going to gravitate to you. And what does Chris Tapp's do? He turns that and makes plays for his teammates. Here, he does a nice job of not catching the ball because if he catches it, he allows a guy like Aaron who has great hands to come over there and try to swipe at the ball. He just tips it right over to Derek White, perfect timing, and he hits the three. All right, here we got a pick and roll, but Kenny Hustle does a nice job slipping right between the cracks of the two defenders. And look at your 7-3 center right here, laying it on the line. Blocks Kenrich dunk from behind, and we get the ball. And here again, he sees that there's a non-big in the paint. Jalen Williams is involved in the pick and roll, so what does Chris Hatch do? Again, he ducks right in, tries to get deep post-up positioning. He gets it here, and as soon as he catches the ball, again, somebody is going to react to him catching it so what does he do again he uses the tip pass to quickly get it back to him i'll just miss the three and lastly one more time for the defense he holds mike muscala who's running the floor and here aaron wiggins tries to dunk on him after accelerating he goes up with two hands but then he realizes that aaron wiggins is going more to his left so he reaches out with the left and denies Aaron Wiggins with an incredible block by Chris Tapps for his fifth of the game. But that is a video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, subscribe, and share to any and everyone that you can. Just swing out there a little bit more. And I will see you guys in the next video. But this is Nick. Peace.